Professor McLean? Yes. Hey, uh, we're back. We're, we have lost our commercial stations, which is about half our audience. But the other half of our audience are non-commercial stations, the Pacifica stations around the country, American Forces Network, and all the people watching us on Free Speech TV, on Dish Network, DirecTV, and, and, and whatnot are still with us. So, uh, and that'll be for four minutes during this commercial break. And then when we come back from the commercial break, I'll just quickly uh, summarize whatever you say, and then we'll have probably three or okay. four minutes until the bottom of the hour, at which point we'll wrap this up. So, um, you, 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 <laughs> we're talking about the creation of favelas in this country, um, and that every yeah. state is going to end up like Texas. California, and I would argue probably uh, Oregon and, and, and Washington State, would beg to differ. Mm -hmm. um, are, do you think that the end game or the end result of this multi-decade effort by the Kochs and their buddies to, um, to remodel America under these, over these uh, libertarian Ayn Rand kind of ideals um, could lead to a breakup of the United States? Uh, you know, frankly, I think they welcome the talk. You know, some people have joked about California seceding or Washington seceding, you know, and, and, and they, they would love this. I mean, these are people who actually embrace secessionist ideology in some ways or the spectrum of secession. Buchanan talked about it. And, you know, a lot of people out there where you are on the left coast, you know, and, and other parts of the country will talk about the race to the bottom now and how so many corporations and state governments have been cutting away and instead of taking the high road, taking the low road. Um, but if what I learned from following Buchanan is that that was actually a conscious strategy that <laughs> Buchanan, around the time he started working with Koch, was pushing for in inviting corporate CEOs and right-wing foundations and think tanks to come and talk about operations. He called it on the spectrum of secession, under which he included privatization, federalism, devolution, et cetera, and said, you know, essentially, if you can move things away from the federal level back Back to the state level, you know, then effectively you can whipsaw one state against another. So you can be absolutely sure that right now there are red state um, uh, government representatives trying to get industries from California and from Seattle, as they did with Boeing, uh, to relocate to the red states where they will face much lower taxes. They won't have to contribute for public services on the same level. So it is a very kind of doggy dog, uh, but a conscious strategy to play the the states off one against one another in order to continue to lower what it is that the public can expect from right. their well, government or from like minimum wage standards. Right, and plus in those red states they won't have to deal with you unions. You guys are a little protected out there, but so, it's important to note that there are 25 states now that are fully controlled by this right wing of the Republican Party, both houses of the legislature and the governorship, right. and they are pushing toward a constitutional convention. Wow. By the way, I'm in Washington, D.C., yeah. but... Uh, Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> you were talking uh, about the left coast. I yeah, yeah. about so all the people out there. I was talking, just talking to somebody in California before I got confused. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Um, uh, wow, this is this is uh, really, really extraordinary. The the uh, who who? Well, actually, we're going to hit a break here in just a second. In, in like okay. Five seconds, six seconds. Um, but I, when we come back, I want to ask you: Who are the people that we really should be paying attention to? Who, who are the, okay. the, 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 yeah. the, 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 the folks to watch? So stick. we'll be right back. Uh, Professor Nancy McLean is with us, uh, author of Democracy in Chains, The Deep History of the Radical Roots, uh, Radical Rights Stealth Plan for America. We're talking with Professor Nancy McLean. Uh, her new book, Democracy in Chains, The Deep History of the Radical Rights Stealth Plan for America. And uh, it, it's interesting, we were talking during the break, and you said that uh, the... Uh, Mr. Buchanan and the Koch Network and some of these people have actually been encouraging some of these secessionist movements. Like if they could get rid of California and turn the rest of the country into Kokistan, that would be just fine with them. Well, I do want to be clear, and I don't know about any particular advice on the California question, but right. Buchanan always welcomed secessionist impulses and was very much encouraging the kinds of state strategies that produce the, the race to the bottom. Right. So, uh, so going forward, and we have about two minutes left here, Professor McLean. What are, who are the people that we need to be watching? What are the institutions we need to be watching? What, how, you know, where, what are the flags? That I love we should... that question. I love that question, Tom. And I would say, surprise, surprise, it is not Donald Trump. <laughs> you yeah. know? 
if we could just tra- you know get our transfixed eyes away from the spectacle of him and even away from this Russia investigation, I mean, that's going to work itself out. But while we're all focused on that, all of these other quite radical changes are being pushed through at the state level, at the agency level, any place that they can find an opening. So I would say I would watch Mike Pence. I would watch Mark Short, who is Koch's, or the White House's uh, legislative affairs director, who comes from the Koch apparatus. I'd watch Scott Pruitt at the, the EPA. And I'd particularly watch, you know, again, that old principle, follow the money, is a really good one. So I would encourage your listeners to pay attention in the news to what is the Club for Growth doing? What are they saying? Who are they, you know, organizing against? What are they supporting? So Club for Growth, Freedom Partners, and Americans for Prosperity, because they also would like us to believe that there is some bright line between Trump and the Kochs. And, you know, I'm just very skeptical of that based on what I've seen. He's pushing through so much of their agenda. um, And Americans for Prosperity is working at the state level to make sure that these things go through. So I would say keep your eyes on, again, Americans for Prosperity, Freedom Partners, uh, the Club for Growth, and uh, Mike Pence um, and, right. uh, and Mark Short. Trump was part of the Koch network, wasn't he? Didn't he go to their meetings? Um, I don't think so. I, I, I have not seen reference to that, but he does certainly have people in his orbit that overlap with their orbit. And um, I mean, I, I, a part of me wonders if he's not revealing his tax returns, not because of the Russians, but because of domestic monies that he's gotten or sure. given. So I think, again, those tax records could be very, very helpful to us. But I think also people should understand that when he talks about draining the swamp, he doesn't mean what liberal listeners think he means in terms of corporate lobbyists and money and politics. He's talking about the people in a Buchanan-like way and organizations like trade unions, the AARP, civil rights groups, Planned Parenthood. That's who he's talking about when he talks about draining the swamp. Remarkable. Nancy McLean, it's a brilliant book, Democracy and Chains. Check it out. Nancy, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tom. Good to be with you. To the Tom Hartman program. Call 202-808-9925. We'll be right back. Stick around. 